Now, under the fundamental ones, you also have the time. Your time is measured in seconds. Now, you have the temperature. The temperature can be measured with three major units. But in, in, in the graph, uh, uh, in the table given, I only gave for what? Kelvin. We have Kelvin, we have degrees Celsius, and we have degrees Fahrenheit. But as we proceed, you'll be able to know the differences in those three SI units. We also have the electric current. Electric current is also an example of what? Your fundamental quantity. So we said the SI for electric current is given in what? Amps. We call it ampere. Ampere. That's the full meaning. Why the word actual symbol is A. Now we also have what? The amount of substance. And that's what the down is measured in what? In mole. Now it's measured in mole. As we proceed, you know the actual what? source of all this in. And now your luminous intensity. Luminous intensity is also an ex another example of what? Fundamental quantities. So let's now go to derived quantities. What are their examples and their SI units? We spoke, we gave you the definition of derived quantity at that time. We said it contains the combination. It is the combination of two or more fundamental quantities. Let me break that down. When you have your area, area, how do you measure area? If this is to be a, a body, this body this is a cubic body. We call it a cube. Abby? Now, this particular body is what we call solid. It's a solid body. But a plain body, when you have it in a what? In a rectangular shape. This a plain body can have a plain area where you have your breadth and where you have your length. And this area of this body is what? Length times breadth. So meaning that this length is a what? Is a fundamental point. This breadth is a fundamental point. So when the two of them come together, they produce what? Area, which is now a what? A derived quantity. So you can see now. So the SI unit of this area is given as what? Meter squared. Do you understand? And that's the SI unit. Now we also have the volume. The volume. So this keyboard I drew here has three major quantities. It has the length, the breadth, and what we call the height. It has the length, the breadth, and the height. So if you are to determine the volume of this body, you'll be considering length times breadth times height. So the SI means for volume. For volume is given as what? Meter cube. Meaning that there are diff three different what? Lengths, which are what? Fundamental quantity. They all came to be that perform one derived quantity. So the table has given us different, uh, different derived quantities and their units. So let's proceed. Another topic under uh, our first section is measuring distances. How do you measure distances? What are the tools used to measure distances? Tools like we have the ruler, we have your compact, we have your protractor. Now, when you say ruler, compass, and protractor, so a lot of people have the mathematical set, but they don't actually know the names of those um, set devices. We have devices of this structure. Now, you, you must have seen it that it's been calibrated. No, you know, from here, they, they calibrate it to 90 degrees, and from here down to 180. Another one is, you understand? So this particular device is what we call your what? Your protractor. Now, this is what you call, this is what you call your compass. We have, we have the compass, we have the protractor. We, have, we also have the dividers. We call it angle divider. So all these particular devices found in your what? Your mathematical set is actually used to measure distances, either radially, or what? Linearly. When I say radially, radially is like this, probably like a curve. If you are measuring distances from point X to point Y to point Z, this is X, Y to Z. So if you are measuring distances this way, it's what we call radial length. It's called radial length. And if you are measuring distances linearly, that's on a straight line from point A to point B, it's called what? Linear Length. So all these particular measurements are what must be considered and their differences must be known. So those are, those are the tools used in, doing, in measuring distances. Now, I have some activities here for you to actually practice. We have how to measure your class, how to measure a dough house, how to measure a piece of clothes. What do you need? Just take your ruler. Your ruler is being calibrated. When I say calibrated, the process by which what, those measurements are actually being put. You take your ruler now, your ruler can either be calibrated in centimeter 
or in millimeter, whichever one your, your ruler is calibrated. You can actually use it to what? To measure your heart, your building. If you take your building and let's say the longer part, the longer part of your room, let's say you measure it and you go to 70 milli, 70 feet. Another thing you must know when you talk about length, you must know the difference between your feet, centimeter, millimeter. Uh, those are the assignment of length, but they are different, they, they have differences. You also have inches. Do you understand? Whatever measuring instrument you are using, you must know what, what they actually use to what they actually use to calibrate it. So whichever uh, device you are using to measure your room, you must know what is used to what calibrate it. But if you are measuring distances of what? Long length or longer length, then you must look at what? Feet. If you want to measure the distance of your room now from one particular edge to another, you won't get nothing less than 70 to 100 feet. Do you understand? Let's say, not even a room, let me say a big hall. Maybe a room now, you should, you should be measuring 20 feet. Some rooms are very small, which will be getting 10 feet. Or some, 4 feet. But if you are measuring rooms, but large hall, looking at what? Feet. So by the time you measure that, you'll be able to know that the length of my room is so, so, so feet. While the breadth of my room is so, so, so feet. Are you getting it now? So, those are the words measuring activities that can be done under measurement. Another practice under your activity is to calculate the distances between these two points in a map. Yeah, we, have, we can have a map, a map of your country for instance, whether it's a map of Nigeria or a map of wherever. You can actually work, calculate the distances. Let's take the map of Nigeria for instance now. If you have something like this, let me see if I can get this map very well. You have something like this. If Lagos is situated somewhere here, as Lagos, and let's say Abuja is somewhere here, on your map, you should be able to calculate the distances from here to here. Take note. What you need to know is that, okay, on that map, what is it? What are the distances? What are they calibrated within? On some map, you can get, they might say, 100 feet is equivalent to what? 2 centimeters. Meaning that if you put your ruler on this map, at every point where you have 2 cm, eh, you're automatically recording 100 feet. Do you understand? So that's the major way. So if you are looking at a map, you have a map in your house, you must know what length are they actually used in terms of equivalence for you to actually know the distance from Lagos to Abuja. So those are another, I mean, that's another activity in terms of measurement. So let's proceed. Now, let's go to position. What is position? When we say position, we say position position of a point in space is described with respect to another point whose position is known. Let's look at position in terms of what we call Cartesian graph. That's what we call Cartesian graph. What's a Cartesian graph? It's nothing difficult. It's just what? A graph between a vertical line, which is known as your x-axis, and your what? Your horizontal line, which is known as your what? Your x-axis. Now, a Cartesian graph can be drawn this way, whereby both lines are perpendicular to each other. Now, your Cartesian, on your Cartesian line now, you can detect the position at which the object is. Okay, let's say the positive side of your what? X, Y axis. Now, this is the negative side. Now, this is the positive side of the X axis, and this is your negative side of the X axis. Now, you measure your Y now, let's say at point 3, and your Y, I mean your X, let's say at point 4. If you actually draw the point, a broken line to meet each other. This is a position x. This position x is at what? y dot x. Now, if you actually want to complete, it's going to be at what? 4 to 3. Meaning that x is 4, y y is 3. So this particular point is the position of x. So if you must define position, position must be with respect to two particular what? graph, two particular what? line. That's your y axis and your x axis on a particular Cartesian graph. Look at the statement there. The next thing is that if we say the coordinates of the point P are X1 and Y1, we mean that the distance from P to the position O in the X axis is what? X1. This is what they are actually trying to talk about. The distance from this point O, this is point O. You understand? The distance from this point O to what? This X. She understand? In terms of what? X axis is 4. And in terms of y axis is what? Is 3. So if you look at it diagonally, this is a diagonal line. That's what we call diagonal line. Look at it diagonally. 
the, the this position is now what? Position of 4 to 3 in terms of what? The actual position of x. So those that's the actual meaning of what? Position. If you ask, the, the, the actual meaning of position is when you consider a particular object in terms of Cartesian graph. And if, from what we have seen there, it's the actual position of x. Let's go to displacement and distance. Displacement and distance. What is distance and what is displacement? If you look at it properly, we say distance is a scalar measure. What do I mean? This distance is a scalar measure of an interval between two words, location, measured along the word, actual path connecting them. This is two locations, point A to point B. If I decide to draw a line here now, the distance between point A to point B is a, you understand? What happens between point A and point B is what we call distance. Do you understand? That's why the definition says is the is the interval between two locations along the actual path connecting them. This is the actual path connecting them. That's the interval between what A and B along the actual path connecting them. Why displacement is a vector measure of the interval between two locations measure along the shortest path connecting them. What do I mean? If this one is straightforward. Now, if I have a body, this is a room. Let's take a room for instance. A point is here, point A. Another, another object is here, point B. Now, and on this, in this room, you can't pass through this wall to meet with B. Share this that. You can't pass through this wall to meet with B. Now, you have to measure the actual distance. Measuring the actual distance. Do you understand? Measuring the, as in taking the actual measurement between A and B, considering the structure of this room, is what we call distance. Why displacement is the what? Is the shortest distance. That shortest distance between A and B, irrespective of the wall, 